So it already started. Huh? It already started. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for coming to the lecture and for those who managed to come. I will talk about temporal distribution of emissions, uh, fleets, phase analysis. <coughs> this is not uh, my PhD. Maybe yet, maybe in the future. <laughs> I will integrate this, which is something that I have an uh, interest. And uh, it's extension of uh, LCA and my new elements, uh, one function unit, and we expand to, to the fleet. That means all the uh, products in use, and you, you can get some other dynamics. Uh, um, for the LCA. So how many of you are familiar with LCA? Okay, <laughs> and so I will go a quick to, to the LCA, um, uh, not the framework, but the, the, the concept behind the framework. Then I will introduce this uh, dynamic uh, life cycle inventory. It means put the, the time dimension in, in the inventory to, to see the distribution of uh, emissions. But in this case, uh, I'll talk about energy, uh, energy distribution of time. Well, life cycle thinking, I think everybody is very tired to know. And you have uh, your products. Um, in this case, I'll talk about a car. And this car runs on fuels, and, and to produce the car you need um, a factory. And in the factory, uh, you transport the product into the customer. And to, to run the factory, you need to extract the raw materials. And then in the end of the life, this, this product can, can have um, different um, scenarios for the end of life. And for example, it can be remanufactured, going back to the factory, or it can be uh, replacing the, the raw materials. And also can be disposed um, in landfill. Uh, for the LCA, that takes all the, um, the processes in each stage. Um, and computes the inputs and outputs and the, the energy required for each of, the, of those processes and compile it in a, in a table and the softwares they, they, they can do very well this uh, thing and then you do the impact assessment you, trans, you use some methods and this method they have a formula for calculation, calculating each uh, contribution of uh, each input or emission uh, to, to, it, to the categories that you can then, uh, depends on the method, you have different categories. And then you identify the, the hotspots, what they call, uh, which process is contributing more in, in the life cycle stages there. And with that, you can uh, do some uh, radical innovation, for example, uh, using your best friend to, to run a machine. Uh, or can simple uh, to be situated the material that is contributing the hotspot, or, or in this case, I will talk about uh, steel car, uh, substituting the steel for aluminum. Uh, and this is a steel state picture. That means it's, uh, there's no snapshot of a situation. And there is no dynamic. Um, for example, if you introduce this new product, how, how, you, how fast you can introduce in the market? And, What's the effect? Is this um, this um, transient uh, effect until it goes to a steady state again? 
and uh, you have the fleet that is a, a stock, um, in this case a fleet of cars. And this has uh, what we call in system dynamics inertia for, for um, um, going outside the fleet and inside the fleet. So you cannot simply discard all the old products and substitute it for a new product. So there is a, a dynamic that if you use uh, this methodology, what we call system dynamics, you can in include these other um, factors. So how fast it goes for substituting and how um, what the percentage of then uh, recycling and going back to the fleet in the case of the, the aluminum. Because the benefit here is that uh, the aluminum is lighter than the, the steel. So in the use stage you use less uh, fuel. Uh, when you're going to have this uh, cross uh, over time, that this benefit of having a lighter uh, product in the use phase but you have more, you need more energy to extract the aluminum that is still. So when where is this uh, time that will cross over to get the benefits? LCA doesn't account for um, this, um, uh, this 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 factor. So we have uh, transient effects that you need to analyze. You have the stocks and flows. That means flows uh, the cars going inside the fleet, inside the stock, and also the cars going outside outside this, the fleet. And you have a delay. Um, that means this time that you get the benefits. And you also have uh, feedback loops. Um, because, for example, the, uh, when you, the car, they introduce the aluminum car in the fleet, then after the, the lifespan, you're going to uh, have this aluminum back, you can have this aluminum back to the fleet. So there's, uh, the more you have cars in the fleet, aluminum cars, the more you're going to have the recycled aluminum instead of the virgin material. So there is one guy, or maybe three guys, that uh, wrote a very interesting paper, and I'll talk about that paper. So new materials in a dynamic perspective. As I said, um, and you, you, you should investigate not only the state state, but in a dynamic perspective when you introduce a new material, especially when the, the lifespan is, is long as a car, uh, 19 years or 20, it depends on which country you are talking about. And this uh, analysis can be done not for all the processes, but to a core of processes um, which this uh, dynamic or this behavior uh, is, is, is linked or defined. And this they, they call fleet-based analysis. Um, so here is the causal loop diagram which uh, this paper presents. Um, yeah, Thanks. You have, you have here a, a demand for the components, and this is a causal link, a positive causal link. That means these two variables um, move in the same direction. If the demand of components increase, the steel components also increase, and will increase the end of life steel components that will increase the recycled steel. And the demand uh, increasing, you also increase the extraction of virgin aluminum. Uh, after a delay, we we'll also in increase, this symbolizes the delay, increase the end of the life of uh, aluminum components. And they will increase the recycled aluminum. We will increase uh, back the recycled aluminum components in, in the fleet. So here's a reinforcing feedback loop. Uh, that reinforces the original change. If this increases, the loop uh, through a cause and effect change will 
reinforce the, 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 cha the change in the same direction. And also there is a balancing loop here. That means uh, the uh, effect of uh, the change, um, will, the cause effect will counterbalance the original change. If this uh, increase, the, the, the virgin aluminum components increase, this will increase, this also will increase, this also will increase. So we recycle more, so we extract less uh, virgin. So it's a balancing. Uh, and then the authors, they made a stock and flow diagram that is represented here. Um, so we have the stock of virgin aluminum components in the fleet, and this uh, is the heat flow from the extracting the um, virgin aluminum. And the cars, when they retire, it goes to outflow here, and uh, a new stock here of uh, end of um, life aluminum components. Uh, <clears throat> and then this uh, aluminum are recycled back in the fleet, and here is the fleet of uh, recycled aluminum components. Um, and, and, and here is the reinforcing feedback loop that was represented uh, in the causal loop diagram. Just a second. And uh, here is the, the balancing uh, loop that was represented there. And these are parameters demand for components, you, you, you assume this value, and these are uh, computations uh, in, in uh, equations. Yes? Uh, I actually had a question about the previous slide. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the relation between recycled alum uh, aluminum and uh, steel components? Because if you increase the aluminum, it seems like the steel components also increase. This one? Yeah. No, if you if you use uh, if you use more recycled aluminium, you use less virgin. So basically, you would use more steel than again because there's this one. Yeah. Now, if you use if you increase this, we will uh, decrease this. I'm sorry. Yeah, the negative indicates that the, the um, variables change in different directions. Yeah. So if you recycle more aluminium here, yeah, yeah you recycle more aluminium, aluminium you will use less virgin aluminum. Yes. And, and more steel components. Because there's a minus again. Yeah, this is the, the replacement. That if you use more uh, uh, aluminum. My question is more about the relation between the recycled aluminium and the steel components. So if you use more recycled aluminium, what will happen to the steel components? Yes. Yeah. I, I can really answer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Here, demand for components. Yeah, the left. And then we'll decide. Uh, if you use steel or aluminium, then it has to decrease aluminium at the end. Because this left component will decide. So uh, your assumption is going back to this one. Not directly that way. There is another one. Okay. Yeah, you can't do this cause effect chain. You have to do this one over here. Right? Yeah, so there is no linear uh, relation between these two. Uh, yeah, this between two. these two, there is. Yeah, there is this loop and this loop. This is a decision not to choose aluminium or steel. Thanks, Professor. So <laughs> demand, demand is constant. There's constant demand of resources. Constant demand. No, if you use. Uh, aluminium, then you will automatically reduce the use of steel. Okay. So that is the demand for components. Yeah. Then that means if you increase the uh, aluminium component, then it will automatically reduce the steel demand. Yeah. So it just seems like the diagram, if you assume that relationships kind of run in sequence, it's, it can be a little misleading because the double negative between recycled aluminum and steel makes it seem like 
creates a positive relationship. Oh, but when you run into put equations, <coughs> and the, in the equations you don't find this uh, yeah, no, I mean, relationship. I, that, I, there's no, I don't think there's much of, a, of an argument. You have two negatives between two separate. It's just, I, I think it's, your explanation makes perfect sense, but I think for this diagram, it's a little bit misleading. Or maybe what would mitigate that is just to make it clear from the beginning that these loops should be viewed separately, that there isn't a direct tie between recycled aluminum and steel. Mm -hmm. And you actually cannot see uh, the variables in isolation. You need to consider the, the orders also changing. Like, um, this is changing, but this is also changing. And, you know, this, it's, um, it's hard for our brain that's why they use uh, the software for analyzing. But that's good observation, thanks. Well, and here is the parameters value for the computations. And uh, what is important, I think, is the uh, demand for cars that they assumed, uh, the useful lifetime. And you can see here the, the energy benefit of using uh, recycled, or if you're using aluminum, um, or, the, or virgin. But this is, will be, I uh, will distribute uh, this table for the exercise, and you can look more careful in that. And here are the results. Um, so here's the energy lifetime consumption. Uh, and the authors, they did two computations. They compared uh, the product-based uh, life cycle inventory and the fleet-based life cycle inventory. Uh, and the product-based, they simply, simply um, take the algebraic, algebraic product of a single car um, and the fleet size. Um, and uh, this lighter curve is the product based steel, and the other dotted curve is the product based aluminum. And you see the, the, the benefit um, showed here it's 17% uh, difference. Yes, um, but when you look at the other two curves, of fleet based, and you see a, a slight uh, transient effect that you're uh, phasing in the aluminum in the fleet, and, and then this fleet is uh, growing, and you have um, the possibility of uh, using the recycled aluminum that is going outside the fleet. So, there, there are two cases here uh, uh, upper curve is the without uh, recycled uh, loops, uh, which means the car is retiring, the aluminum car is retiring and not going, going back into the fleet, so using just virgin aluminum. And the other lower curve is the one that you use uh, recycled, and so those uh, two feedback loops are operating. And until the year 40, uh, the reinforced feedback loop uh, dominates and then um, the balancing loop dominates. That means you you extract uh, <coughs> less virgin than uh, the recycled one to the fleet. Um, and this uh, phasing of aluminum um, is given to the year 20. And then we have uh, this is stands for body in white. That means the this part of the car. So we have 54% of steel in the fleet in the year 20. In the year 100, uh, you have the production of 84% of recycled aluminum and 8% of uh, in use, sorry, yeah, the product, and in use, 8% of recycled aluminum. Yeah. And you give a zoom in here. And the authors say that the energy benefits actually appears just in the year uh, 24 for when you want to consider the recycling. 
we see here. And if you don't consider the recycling, it will appear in the year 20, uh, 31. That means that if you don't consider this fleet-based analysis, you overestimate the benefits of um, uh, the, the introduction of the aluminum in the, in the fleet. Yes? But is there like an, did they use like an average value for how much a car, how much you drive, the mileage of an average car, or what? Yes. Because the time is... Uh, they consider the lifetime uh, 300,000 uh, kilometers for both 